Today is October 3rd, and today's webinar is IBM Mobile Options, Which One is Right for You? Thank you for joining us. It's going to be a great session. We'll be comparing the mobile offerings from IBM including Every Place, Anywhere, and Work Centers to help you match the solution that best fits your needs. My name is Alex Duggan, and I will be your MC today. I'm Senior Project Manager with LMI360, a sales and marketing organization focused on service and technology providers that support the commercial built environment. In short, we help your company grow. Joining us today is Amy Tatum, Vice President of Starboard Consulting. Amy has over 25 years of experience as an engineer and technology consultant and has managed the implementation of countless Maximo projects. Amy was also one of the featured presenters for Starboard's August 22nd webinar, IBM Maximo Spatial with Interactive Demos. Just in case you missed that webinar and the terrific information that Amy and the presenters shared, we'll be including a link with our follow-up. Our other presenter for today is going to be Starboard Solutions Director, John Brights. John has more than 26 years of experience as a technology consultant working with enterprise asset management and financial systems across industries. Amy and John, thank you so much for joining us. Let's begin. All right. Thank you, Alex. I appreciate the uh, introduction, and thank you everyone for joining us today on the call. We hope that you'll get some valuable information out of what we have to share, and when we're all done, uh, if you need any follow-up information, and we'll be happy to reach back out to you and provide that uh, at a later date. What we're going to go over today is um, an overview of the IBM Maximo mobile options. Uh, we are focused on the IBM products for today. I know there's a lot of other mobile solutions out there available for Maximo. Um, including all of them in a single hour session would just be way too much information to cover. So we are going to be focused on the IBM products and we're going to go through just an overview of what those are, um, talk about some of the pros and cons, the differences between them, how you might make a selection uh, between one or more of them, and then we'll have some time at the end for Q&A. Um, just as a reminder to everyone, at 2.18, I think we're all going to get some sort of text message from our president. So um, just kind of know that's coming. I, you're all on mute, so I don't think that will interrupt the flow of the session any. Uh, but it may distract a few folks and make you think you need to run outside or hide under your desk or something like that. So um, just be aware. All right, so um, as Alex said, with me today is John Breet. Uh, he's one of our solutions directors here at Starbird and has done a lot of mobile implementations over the years as well as Maximo implementations. And again, my name is Amy. I'm one of the vice presidents at Starbird and solutions director and have been working with Maximo for about 20 years myself. Uh, Starbird Consulting, for those of you that aren't familiar with us, um, we are a Maximo consultancy. We're a gold premier IBM business partner focused on Maximo implementations. Uh, we work in the utilities and municipal space mostly, but do have clients in some other spaces. A lot of our consultants have also been working with Maximo for about 20 years. Um, as a company, we've been doing this for about 11. And um, our approach is to partner with you, um, help you understand uh, Maximo and the third party and, and IBM solutions available for it, uh, build your knowledge, ensure that we're delivering the right solution for you um, as your, your partner and implementer. So what we're going to talk about today, there are three IBM mobile solutions available to you um, every place is one of them and has been around probably for the longest. Anywhere is another. And um, I know those two often get confused with every place and anywhere and any place and everywhere and all of that. But um, it is every place and anywhere. And then there's a more recent addition to the, the fold with the work centers. Um, and that's another uh, option to you available now. Um, a couple of things to know about that, and I just realized I'm not advancing the slides, so let me catch up a little bit here. Um, a couple of things to know about those, uh, they're not mutually exclusive. Um, your correct solution may involve more than one of these products. So it's not an, an either or. Um, you don't have to pick just one. Depending on your, 
user community, your connectivity, um, what you need the products to do, that may lean you in one direction more so than another. So hopefully by the end of today, you'll have a little better idea of, of what each of those do and which ones might make the most sense for, for your users. Um, one of the big differentiators is the connectivity. Um, the Anywhere solution will work seamlessly in a connected or disconnected mode. The Every Place and Work Center ones are going to want that connection because they are uh, mobile extensions of the Maximo product using a browser-based solution uh, which would require connectivity. Uh, there's some differentiators in the configurability of the products. So some of them are more easily tailored than others. Uh, they have different development platforms behind them and different capabilities to utilize um, both tailoring of the screens and tailoring of the, the business processes and the logic behind them. There's some differentiators within the licensing. Um, some of the, the options are included. There's no additional licensing. Um, your users would have to have a Maximo license, but there's not a separate mobile license, uh, whereas with others there is an additional license that's required um, to be able to use the product in the mobile environment. Another differentiator is whether or not the, the mobile solution is app-based or just an extension of Maximo. So by app-based, uh, what we mean there is you would uh, potentially download an app from a Play Store or just that the, the apps themselves are very role-based. So if you're working as a, an inventory warehouseman doing cycle counts, you might have an app for that. If you're working as a technician doing work order repairs, you might have an app for that. Um, so with some of them being very role and app based, it requires additional security or additional um, applications to be downloaded to your device to interact with Maximo according to that role. Great. Thank you, Amy. So before we get started, we have a quick uh, poll we'd love to hear from you. So if you take a minute, uh, if you would, would love to hear, do you have mobile solutions as part of your Maximo implementation today? Are you using every place, anywhere, work centers, data splice, or any of the others? I see some good, good results coming in. Give it just one more minute. Great. Thank you for your, your feedback. Great. Thanks, Alex. Um, hi, this is John, and I'm um, looking forward to speaking a little bit more in depth about, uh, about the different options that we have. Uh, I'm going to start off with Maximo Every Place and then uh, move into the other two options in, in a few minutes. So, um, so we listed a few of the key features uh, from, a, from a user standpoint of Maximo Every Place um, here on the screen. Um, you know, one of the key things is that to use Every Place, you have to be connected to Maximo. There's no disconnected option. It is really just an extension of Maximo um, built using the same application designer that, that you would use to configure any, any of your other Maximo applications. Um, probably the key difference is that when you um, when you configure those uh, those applications, you select what's called a viewport, and um, and that uh, that scales it for the size of the device that you're that you want to implement. Um, you know whether it's a phone or a tablet. Um, it also does things such as uh, the make the buttons a little bit larger, so it works a little bit better with a um, you know with touch with a uh, touch screen and with your finger versus uh, using a mouse. Um, so because it's, it's an extension of Maximo, there's no additional server required, um, such as there is um, in, in one of the other options. Um, the, uh, it does come with a few template applications that are available to use as a starting point, but um, in most cases you'll at least tailor those applications and likely clone and configure others in order to meet your, your business needs. So it gives you a starting point to kind of see how, they, how they're set up, but um, there is some configuration work typically to be done to really start using uh, uh, every place. Um, like I said, you do use the application designer, so there's not a different tool that you would have to learn in order to, con in order to configure that. Um, because you're in Maximo, all of the business logic that's built into Maximo is, is, um, is evoked when you, um, 
when, when you uh, access those applications. Um, there's no additional licensing involved, so your, your standard licenses um, that you use with Maximo do work with, um, with every place. There's not additional licenses that, that you need to procure. Um, and then it, it leverages the Maximo administration and security. So um, these might be a little bit hard to, to see, but a few notes about the, um, the, the Every Place application. Um, if you've seen the new 761 skin for Maximo, it's got a, it's got a different look and feel. Um, those have not been applied to the newest version of Every Place. So they do still look like the, um, the prior versions of 76, um, which, which obviously gives you a little bit different look and feel. Um, as far as, um, as far as setting up every place, um, you know, I, I mentioned that uh, you, when you set up those applications, you'll typically clone an existing application. You'll streamline it in order to meet your needs. You do have to check that it's uh, used with mobile, and then you, uh, you select the viewport that's appropriate for that particular application. Um, there is a mobile start center, which is kind of to the top left of the, of the screen that you're looking at right now. So um, you've got that same sort of navigation where you can put some favorite applications out there and not have to navigate through uh, numerous menus. Um, you can quickly find things. Um, and there is uh, mapping capabilities. So if you've got mapping capabilities within your Enterprise Maximo, um, then uh, those, that will be available to you when you utilize um, Maximo every place. John, I'm going to point out just because this is a connected solution, all of the, the data updates and the interaction between the user is, is real time. So as changes are made and saved, they're immediately available for someone who may be logged into Maximo on their desktop or even another mobile user uh, to see and retrieve that data. There's not a, a storm forward type of thing. It's just an automatic um, immediate update to the, the Maximo data. Great. Thanks, Amy. Um, so, so that was just a, a brief overview of uh, every place. Um, now we get into Maximo Anywhere, and Maximo Anywhere is a, um, is, is a product. Um, it does uh, require the installation of a server, the mobile first server. Um, it does give you the ability to work in connected or disconnected mode. So if you do not have network connectivity in a particular area, um, you can continue to work until that connectivity is, uh, is restored or available. <coughs> um, you, uh, you use your mobile browser. Um, the, the screens are configured using HTML5 and JavaScript. Um, there currently is not a, um, a configuration tool provided by, a, uh, by IBM. There are some third-party tools available, but if you, if you want to do um, a little bit more configuration, then, um, then you're going to have to either get into the, H the HTML code or you're going to have to um, look at using one of the third-party tools. Um, one of the other differentiators with Anywhere is that um, it's app-based. So um, if you, you download the apps for specific functions from either the, uh, the App Store or the Play Store or Application Center, depending on which uh, infrastructure you use. Um, and so that means that a particular user may require multiple apps. Um, so if, if you just do one particular function, and, and we'll show you an example here in a little bit, um, if you just do one particular function, you may just be in that one app. But if you do multiple things, such as um, maybe you're in the, in the warehouse and you're performing your inventory counts, um, but then someone comes in and needs to, um, and they need to uh, have parts issued to them, then you would have to leave that inventory, the physical count app, go into the issues and returns app, you know, perform those issues, and then you go back into the other app. So, so there is that to consider as well. Um, some of the things that IBM is, is currently focused on is improving the ease of installation and the user experience. Um, a lot of investment coming in those areas. Um, and, uh, and just a few other notes, uh, local data is held in, in a JSON store. So that's how you can work offline, that data stored, stored on the device. Um, and then uh, any updates occur via OSLC transactions. Um, so I mentioned the apps a little bit with Maximo Anywhere and um, show you uh, the apps that are currently available. Um, 
And, uh, and, and like I said, if, if you're in that app, you can perform the functions available within that. But um, if you need to do things outside of what's available in those, um, in those particular apps, then you're going to have to switch over to the app that has that functionality. So examples are, the, um, for example, the work execution app. You can manage your own assignments, and you can view plan materials and tools, um, but you cannot submit a service request from within the work execution app. Those are two different things. If you needed to submit a service request, you would go into the service request app and, and submit that. Um, I mentioned a few minutes ago about the, uh, the physical count and issues and returns. Same idea there. So the idea is that um, if you're performing that specific function, you're, you're staying in the one place. Otherwise, you might need to um, you might need to bounce back and forth a little bit. Um, and then uh, and then these are the apps that are currently available. Um, some industry solutions have have been uh, you know are supported through uh, anywhere. Um, others to come, but this is what's uh, what IBM has made uh, currently available today. So this next screen, it gives you a feel for what, um, what Anywhere looks like. And, um, and you can see that you, that you log in. Um, you can get lists of your work or, or assets or your parts, if, depending on what you're working on. And then when you click into those pieces, you can, uh, you can go into the details and then perform your transactions. Um, the other thing that, that you can do is, uh, is you do have mapping capabilities within Maximo Anywhere. So if you've got that configured within your uh, enterprise Maximo implementation, then that will be available to you um, within your, uh, your Anywhere applications. You'll notice those screens have been configured more to look like the, the work centers and the 761 scans. Great. Thanks, Amy. Um, the final option is uh, Maximo Work Centers, and um, these are a, certainly a viable option to use as, as mobile or, or from your desktop, but um, you know, they're certainly viable to use as a mobile option. Um, very much like uh, Maximo Every Place, they're part of Maximo, so, um, so you, it does not require a, different, a separate server, um, but at the same time you have to be connected. You cannot work in a disconnected mode with the Maximo Work Centers. Um, so have a note there that it was released, the, the first version of the work centers were released with Maximo 7605. So if you're on a prior version of Maximo, then they're not available to you. If you're on at least 7605, then you have access to what's been released as, as part of that particular version that, that you're on. Um, IBM is, is continuing to invest in the functionality. Um, in continued releases, so as new uh, patches come out, as new uh, updates and versions of Maximo come out, um, the, func <coughs> the functionality around the work centers is going to be uh, is going to increase. Um, you you do have to connect to the Maximo X, um, which uh, is just a slightly different URL, um, and that gets you into the work center environment. Um, once you're in there, you can access the, the different features that you've been given um, access to. Um, if you need to access uh, standard Maximo, there's links to, to go back into, um, into kind of core Maximo to do those things, and then you can come back into the Maximo X to work in the work centers. Um, I mentioned that there's no additional server required, but there is a separate ear file. So, um, that gets built and deployed similar to your existing year files, and that's what allows the um, the access to the to the Maximo X environment with the work centers. Um, the uh, the functions are are deployed via cards, so um, they're 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 very streamlined. They're um, you know they they look nice on the screen. They're very compact, and then you kind of drill into the the features and the transactions that are part of those cards. And we have a couple examples that I'll show you here in just a moment. Um, there's no additional license that are specific to the work center, so your license that you have for Enterprise Maximo is going to control what you're available to do within the, the work centers. Um, currently, there's a very limited ability to configure the work centers. Um, you, can, you do have some ability to control the queries that, that 
um, provide the data. So um, if you want to configure the work list that's available to a work technician, um, you do have the ability to, to configure that. But as far as what the screens look like and the fields on the screen, that's very limited right now. There is a configuration tool that IBM is working on that has not yet been released, but we're hoping will be out soon, and that will give uh, additional configuration capabilities. Um, and again, it's, uh, there's Maximo-based administration and security is available. So currently we have uh, a handful of work centers that, that are available. Um, the, uh, the work supervision and work execution and service requests, um, and, and you, you can see the ones on the screen there. Um, so they're all, they're all designed to perform specific functions. The work execution is really just someone that's performing work out in the field or, or, or inside for that matter, but um, they're, they're entering basic information about the work that they're performing. Um, service requests allow you to submit service requests and, and view the, um, any updates to those requests that you've submitted. Um, work supervision allows you to, um, you can manage the work that you're responsible for and, and assign that. Um, and have visibility of the progress of uh, any, any work that's being performed or, or that's been completed. Um, the inspections is, is a nice feature that's, that's been released and uh, you can actually build um, inspection forms. So if, if, you, if you're performing a series of inspections, you can have forms that are capturing that information, whether it's capturing it as inspection results or even tied to um, even tied to meters, and, and you can capture that right in the inspection forms that you've built and, um, and, and put it, configure the questions that, that you're looking for as well as the responses, and it's very easy for someone to kind of tap through and, and quickly record the results of those inspections. Um, the maximum management interface is, is a nice feature that really gives you system administration type visibility of your Maximo environment, things like your JVM performance, your integration queues, cron tasks, and a, and a lot of other things that, that you can have visibility of within that work center look and feel. So that, that's, that's a nice feature for the system administrators out there. Um, and even the asset health insights, um, you know, something you can do with that is you can visualize your assets on maps in locations where, where some sensors have, uh, have been set up to receive some up-to-date data. So you can visualize and see see those assets uh, out in the field and 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 see see how things are going with them. Um, so again, when we look at the work centers, um, they're they're card based. They uh, which which you can kind of see in the top left. Um, it's uh, it's enough information to to know what's what needs to be performed. But um, you basically, if, if, you, if you look at that image on the top left, you would click the Start button, and then from there, um, it's going to prompt you for the, uh, the information that needs to be captured. Um, I, in the, the bottom middle of the screen, we can see that this, this user has a series of hydrant inspections that are waiting to be performed, and they can you know, start the, the next one that they're ready to perform or, or complete the one that, that, that's already been in progress and kind of step through that. In, in a very simple way, um, so it's it's really it's a nice look and feel, and if you have uh, you know strong connectivity, it's it's certainly a viable option to take a look at with um, with really no additional infrastructure investment and um, or license investment, and um, as IBM continues to expand, the work center is really going to provide a lot of nice uh, functionality. And you'll notice um, on one of those work centers, there was a picture of a map. So the map work center is, is brand new. They've just released that, um, I believe, with 761 Maximo 7604 Spatial, which would allow your field users to basically interact with Maximo via that map interface. So they can call up a map, identify where they are, view assets, create work orders, view work orders, um, kind of use that as their, their dashboard or launch pad um, into other uh, Maximo applications. So that's a nice, nice feature that's been, been added with this most recent release of, of the work centers. 
All right. Thank you. So, Alex, I think Great we're overview. back to you. To yeah, thank you. Thank you. Good information. So based on that overview, we'd, we'd love to hear from you, our audience again, so which of these IBM mobile options might be a good fit for your organization? Every place, anywhere, work centers, maybe an other solution or none? Just love your feedback. And Nice. Some really good results coming in. Thank you very much. Appreciate you sharing. Give it just another second. Great. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate the results. Looks like work centers, very popular. Amy, I'll turn it over to you. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, so I want to talk a little bit now about the deployment of each of these solutions. So we've given you kind of an overview of, of functionally from the user's perspective, what do they look like? Um, this is more from the, the IT perspective, what does it take to actually get them up and running, what kind of work is involved in that. So um, as we mentioned earlier, with every place, uh, there is no additional installation for that. Those are going to be installed with your Maximo uh, regular install. So you can see the, the architecture diagram there is basically your, your same Maximo app, uh, application architecture where you're going to have a database server, an application server, um, the end user interacting through the HTTP or HTTPS calls. Um, you would then, of course, define your application requirements um, and then clone the applications or tailor the screen. So as John mentioned, there's a couple of, uh, there's an every place technician screen and an every place supervisor uh, application that are included uh, with the base Maximo. They're pretty just basic work order screens. The technician one is going to have the ability to record some actuals on it. Um, the supervisor one is going to see just some planning or log type information. Um, so what you would want to do is identify what your screen layouts need to be, either change those existing ones or clone those or clone your uh, quick reporting screen or work order tracking screen, whatever you need. Mark it as mobile. Choose your viewport. Modify the screens. Um, establish any default queries or application restrictions that you might want to need to have. Otherwise, the users can have their own saved queries, which they would then execute uh, when they load up the screens. So, and again, because this is basically Maximo, um, just extended for a mobile device, you've got access to all of your automation scripting, um, all of your regular XML edits to make fields required, make them read only. Um, your domains, value lists, all of those types of things are all going to be the same as what you would do within a, a normal native application. You can then you know, grant security access to those users, uh, give them a mobile start center. Oftentimes, depending on the device that they might be using, uh, you may have desktop start centers that have more, more going on in the way of KPIs or, or queries and result sets, things like that. With the mobile users, you may not have uh, quite as much that they have access to from a, a start center perspective. And then, of course, with any deployment, you always want to train your users, uh, make sure they understand how to use the applications, um, what they should be getting, and um, how they should, should use it, what kind of data you're expecting them to enter. So from a deployment perspective, every place is definitely going to be the quickest to deploy uh, because you don't have any additional setup really that has to be done from a hardware or infrastructure perspective. Um, it's a nice way to pilot a mobile solution. Um, if you've got a group that you think when, you, know, you think you want to go mobile, you've got an idea of what that business process should be, every place is a fairly quick and easy way to deploy a pilot. And then from that you can determine, did the connectivity work? Do I need to look at a, a, connect, a disconnected solution? Um, are the screens what I need them to be? Do I need to make some edits? Uh, do I have access to information through every place that's not yet available in work centers, uh, things like that. So every place is a, a good, easy starting point um, for a mobile uh, deployment if you're leaning in that direction. Moving on to um, anywhere, this one is uh, quite a bit more complex. Uh, you are going to have the additional uh, installations. So there's a, a need to download the components, ensure compatibility. 
there's different versions of Anywhere. They're up to 763 now. 763 Anywhere is only going to run with certain versions of, of Maximo, so you would want to make sure to check that compatibility matrix and check your industry solutions, make sure that everything is, is good there. Um, Anywhere does use its own database, so there is a database requirement for that. Um, from an installation perspective, there's Anywhere components that have to be installed in Core Maximo, and then there's the mobile first server and the installation of that, which usually runs on a WebSphere Liberty uh, server, which is a lightweight WebSphere, and then there's the application center that would need to be installed as well. There is a, an administration component uh, with mobile first, so there's another a piece to install there. And then there's just the build and deployment environment. So there's a mobile SDK that's involved, um, depending on your choice of hardware, whether you're doing Android or iOS devices or uh, Windows devices, there's different SDKs there, different applications that have to be built and deployed um, for your users. So Anywhere gets even more complicated if you've got a mix of devices across your environment where you've got some Android users, some iOS users, and you have to be a little bit careful about that. Um, once you've got everything installed, uh, there's some batch scripts to run to set up the initial OSCL, OSLC uh, resources and the administration, and then there's some initial Maximo configurations that would need to be performed in the way of um, system properties and uh, things like that. So that's just getting anywhere installed. Now I, I will say that um, it's come a long way. That, that's a lot of steps still, uh, that having been working with anywhere for several years now, uh, the first installations were, were quite painful and took quite a bit of time. Um, IBM has put a good bit of investment into streamlining that installation process. Uh, there's a lot more documentation about it now than there ever used to be. Uh, there's a whole series of YouTube videos uh, walking people through how to do the various components of the install. Um, so definitely it's, it's gotten much easier, but for, for those of us that were working with it, Early on with the product, um, definitely a few bumps and bruises along the way, uh, getting some of our clients successful in their Anywhere installations. Once that initial installation is done and you have Anywhere ready to deploy, then of course there's uh, the configuration side of things. So again, you've got to define your application requirements. Um, what applications do you need? Is it for inventory? Is it for work orders, service requests, et cetera? Um, are there any business-specific configurations that need to be made there? So if you've got to you know, modify work list queries so that the right crews and workers get the right um, work identified down to their, their devices, uh, if there's any additional configurations that are made for the application UI as far as extra fields, um, making fields required, things like that. And then with each of those, if you're adding a new field to the UI, it's also got to be updated in the OSLC resources. Um, so each of those is, is kind of a multi-step process. Um, rebuilding, deploying the applications. So users can now download the initial apps from the app stores. Uh, so that streamlines that process a little bit. And then any changes that you've made as part of your configurations would be pushed out to them um, on their device. Uh, rather than you having to publish the changed apps to the app stores and then they get it all from there. So they did, again, IBM's made a lot of investment in uh, making this whole process easier and uh, have, have streamlined that quite a bit. Security access, um, and then again, training, of course, is always a critical piece, making sure that users know uh, what they should have, how they should use it, what the interactions would, would be, the business processes and the requirements behind them. So after Anywhere, uh, we have the work centers. Uh, back to a, a slightly simpler deployment here. Um, as John mentioned, the work centers are going to be installed as part of Maximo. Uh, there is a Maximo X ear. If you use the the automated installation processes, that ear will build automatically as part of the, the regular uh, installation, but if you don't or if you've needed to rebuild ears individually, you would need to make sure that the Maximo X ear is built and deployed. Um, you do have to create uh, security groups, 
for the apps and the user roles to make sure that people have access to the apps that they need. And the application access has to be granted both to the work center applications and to the object structures behind them. So I know sometimes it gets a little confusing. You'll grant somebody access to the, the work execution work center, but if they didn't also get access to the, the work order object structure that's part of that, then uh, they wouldn't be able to update the work orders that they see in their work center. So there's a couple of steps to security that have to be done uh, granting access to both. Uh, there's also some setup that's needed. So if you're using service requests, um, you'll see there on the screen capture for the service request, there's those nice, neat little thumbnails that you can pick to identify if it's an HVAC problem or a, a plumbing problem or something else. So you do have to set up the classifications, the ticket templates, identify those images, uh, things like that. So there's some data elements that are required to support the work centers. Um, and then for the work execution, the default query looks at the owner and owner group of the work order. Um, which is not always what most of us use for categorizing who owns our work orders. Uh, we may use lead, supervisor, uh, the assignments table, something else. So depending on how your work is set up and assigned, uh, you may have to make some changes to the queries behind the work centers to make sure that people have access to the information that they need. So. From an installation perspective, it's pretty straightforward. There's not a lot to do there. From a setup perspective, um, the documentation is getting much better, but at first it was a little, little tricky just kind of knowing all the pieces and parts and how they played together and uh, making sure that you could um, get those set up to where people could see what they needed to see and interact with them as needed. John, anything to add on the deployment? Components. No, just um, you know, just just carefully following the documentation that's available. Um, giving the access to the object structures is not something you would do with um, you know with Core Maximo. That 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 piece a little bit uh, different. So as a summary, just to kind of compare the three options. Uh, we tried to identify some of the, the differentiators that we had talked about earlier and, and summarize where those land. So um, looking at it from an installation perspective with the, the installation steps and just the hardware that's required, um, anywhere is going to require that separate install and require that additional hardware. Every place in the work centers do not. So if initial startup and cost and, and hardware is a concern, then again, starting off with every place or work centers as a pilot might be a way to go. Um, configurability is a big piece of it. Um, you know, even, even our Maximo clients that use Maximo out of the box, uh, there's typically something that's changed, whether it's a field label, uh, whether it's a, an extra field on a screen, uh, anything like that. Uh, work centers just aren't quite there yet from a configurations perspective. Um, I'm actually on the business partner team that's working with IBM and providing some feedback on that configuration tool, so I've seen it. It does exist, they just haven't released it yet. And uh, once that comes out, I think that's really going to make a difference for the work centers because it's going to open up that option to be able to configure those, add those extra fields, change things around, um, and that will definitely be a big improvement in the work centers. They're not bad for what they are now, uh, but they are just limited in that if the fields that are delivered aren't what you want, then at this point you're a little bit stuck in that regard. Um, all three of the solutions will work in a connected mode, so no issues there if you've got good Wi-Fi coverage or you've got access points throughout your environment, um, then definitely all three of them can be connected, and in that case updates would be real-time and immediate. Um, any data that's being changed on the Maximo side would, could be pushed to those devices, uh, real time, et cetera. Anywhere is the only one of them that's going to work in a disconnected mode. It is a seamless connection and disconnection. So if you're an Anywhere user working on your device and um, you step out of your coverage range, you're not really going to notice that. Uh, because it will continue to function in that offline mode until you get reconnected uh, due to that local data store that's capturing some of that information and keeping it for you. 
with every place in the work centers, if you lose connection, um, it really depends on whether it's a momentary interruption or a longer term interruption. Uh, so just like if you were at your desk working in Maximo uh, on your PC, if your network drops for just a moment, at most, you might see a, a browser error page, but when you refresh, everything comes right back. Um, same thing with every place in the work centers. For the most part, they will uh, recover from that momentary interruption. If you're disconnected for a period of time, then more than likely your session is going to time out, and you would notice then potentially some loss of data or having to log back in again or, or that type of thing. Um, anywhere in the work centers are the two app-based applications. Uh, so with those, you're going to have very specific role-based apps, and a user might need to, to log into more than one of them. Now with Anywhere, they're very distinct because uh, they are apps local on your device that you would be starting up. With the work centers, you would just see multiple icons on your work center, uh, dashboard, uh, maybe one for work execution, one for service requests. You can navigate between them fairly seamlessly. Uh, and then with every place, again, that one's basically Maximo reconfigured for a mobile device, so everything is within the same types of menu structures and start centers that you would be used to on the desktop. And then the final differentiating factor that we wanted to call out is the licensing. Every place and work center, of course, are included with your Maximo license, so if you've got Express users, then you're going to have the ability for those users to interact with work orders on either the work centers or within every place. Um, if you've got authorized users, they're going to have more, more applications and more ability to do things. Anywhere is an add-on license, so if you've got somebody that has a, an Express user license for Maximo, they would still require an Anywhere license on top of that in order to interact with the, the application through that specific app. All right. So that is the conclusion of the materials, and we've had a lot of great questions come in, so I am going to flip over and start uh, grabbing some of those questions and see if we can't provide some answers. Uh, any of them that are a little more technical in nature, we may not have time to get to uh, right away, and if those, in those cases, then um, we can follow up with you and provide a deeper dive if you've got some specific questions. So um, the first one, authorized versus concurrent licensing, uh, that's part of the new IBM or newer IBM licensing module. Um, concurrent licenses would allow you to have multiple users assigned to a single license as long as they're not logged in at the same time. So if you have shift workers or you have folks across multiple time zones uh, that wouldn't all be logging into my Maximo at the same time, then you could get a concurrent license. And the typical ratio is three to one, uh, but some users will support higher numbers than that if people are kind of in and out of Maximo on a regular basis and don't stay connected for long periods of time, then you might be able to support a higher concurrent license count um, based on that. So we had a question here, John. Um, it's, uh, will it support activities and tasks? Unfortunately, I'm not sure which specific mobile solution this might have been referencing, but can you give us a quick overview of how activities and tasks might look in the three? Sure. So with, with every place, um, you know, it, it, it would be similar to your core Maximo. You would just have to configure the particular application or a clone of that application to to be uh, mobile, and then um, and then whatever the appropriate viewport is. So if you want it to work with it on a phone or on a tablet, once you've done that, then um, then you've got all the same functionality that in every place that you have in in Core Maximo. So there's no difference there. Um, with anywhere, I haven't seen anything specific to. Well, I, the the tasks definitely come into anywhere. I'm sorry, um, come into the work centers. I apologize for that. The, the tasks definitely come into the work centers. Um, it is based on, uh, like Amy said, the default query is based on the owner and owner group fields. So um, if you don't use those as part of your uh, work assignment, then you won't see anything in the work centers. But if you use those fields, then, then you'll see those, um, those tasks assigned to the user. Um, if uh, and then with, I, I'm not sure the answer on that with, uh, with anywhere, Amy. I, I haven't seen that you can or cannot work with um, 
with tasks of anywhere. Okay. So we can follow up on, on that one and get some more information on that. Um, now this question is specifically related to anywhere. And uh, the question is whether or not it supports multi-site, multi-orgs, and also if there's a way to filter the data sync with the database in order to avoid a download of every asset or every location. So what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I don't, there, there's no limits on multi-site, multi-org with, uh, and you said with anywhere, correct? Correct. Yeah. There's no um, there's no limits on that um, with the multi-site multi-org and what was oh the restricting the data sets um, you can you can configure the queries that bring the data sets down so that you know that they're limited in, in some fashion obviously there needs to be some criteria defined in order to say which assets they should have or should not not see but you can do that so that you're not downloading the entire asset registry. Um, so this one's related to every place. I know we said with the work centers, those started showing up around 7605. Um, John, do you remember if there's a minimum version for every place? That one's been around a little um, bit longer. Well, there is. I, I don't know it off the top of my head. Um, my, my recollection I, is every place was initially released with seven, one of the 7.5 versions. It became a free... When it was originally released in 7.5, it was an additional license requirement. With version 7.6, every place became included as part of your core maximum licenses. So I don't think there's a minimum 7.6 release. There may be a limited 7.5 release. But if you're still running 7.5, then definitely give us a call back because we would be happy to help you get that upgraded. All right, lots of questions around anywhere. Um, so a couple of them are a little more detailed. Um, this one has to do, John, with the configuration of anywhere and if automation scripting uh, plays a part in that. What's the, what's the particular question? It just says, does automation scripting play a part in Maximo Anywhere? So. Um, I would assume that's really talking about you know, the, the business rules that you place on the objects, how are those invoked in an anywhere environment. Um, if they, I, mean, yeah, I guess we'd have to. I'd say that's probably one that we'd want to follow up to make sure we're, we understand exactly what they're, what they're looking for and, and um, make yeah. sure we, we address that question appropriately. Um, here's another one about what database flavor is supported. Um, since any uh, work centers in every place don't require a separate database, I, I would assume this question is tied into anywhere. Um, so the database flavors, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, John, I believe it does Oracle, uh, SQL Server, and DB2? Correct, yep. All right, this one, um, if we implement every place with a utility like NetMotion to secure and sustain a connection, will every place function like Maximo when the connection is dropped and then reconnected? Um, currently using NetMotion for field staff on laptops to enterprise Maximo. I'm not familiar with NetMotion specifically, um, but it would function pretty much just like regular Maximo does, with every place being an extension of that Maximo component, then uh, you should expect the same type of response if a connection is dropped. And, and as we mentioned earlier, if it's a momentary interruption, it's typically not an issue. Um, if it's longer term, it may be, but depending on, on what exactly NetMotion does behind the scenes, I don't know if that alters those time periods a little bit for you or not, um, but definitely I would expect a similar type of response as what you have in Maximo if you have that currently today deployed with NetMotion. So this is another anywhere question, and, and John and I can both contribute to this one just based on our experience. But uh, the question is, for anywhere, is there a version that's better than the other between Apple, Android, and Windows uh, in terms of readiness or capacity? So John, have you got any experience or thoughts on that? 
Um, I, well, I've not worked with it with Windows, so um, I'm not as familiar with that one, but um, I haven't seen that either the Apple or the Android one is better than the other. So that's probably been my experience as well, especially more recently. Um, early on, Windows was the last uh, of the environments to be supported, so it was lagging a little bit in some of the, the readiness that was there, but I believe that's been caught up now. Uh, between Apple and Android, I think we early on found the Android deployments to be a little bit smoother than the Apple ones. Um, had some delays in just getting the, the Apple IDs and having to develop specifically on a Mac OS, not being able to use a, a Windows device to do some of the configuration type activities. Uh, but again, I think with IBM's focus in the more recent versions to clean up some of that installation and deployment, stream, not clean up, streamline some of the installation and deployment activities, I think there's less of a difference between the three than there might have been in some of the early releases. Um, with that being said, if you are looking at an Anywhere deployment, you would probably want to make sure that you can go with Anywhere 763 and not um, be on an earlier release, which may in turn require an upgrade to your Maximo depending on where you are with that. So that's a, a big question around just compatibility and, and where you are from a Maximo perspective and which anywhere you can, can go with. Um, there's one here about work centers and whether or not they support the ACM or aviation. Um, I don't believe the industry solutions are supported too much yet in work centers. John, do you recall from the latest IBM roadmaps what's included there? Yeah, not specifically, but um, I don't. I'm, I'm agreeing with you that I don't think there's much with the uh, industry solutions at this time. Um, we do have the the IBM roadmaps and can certainly look back at those and and follow up on that question um, later to see what they've placed on that and, and which industry solutions are on the roadmap and what the timing is uh, for those planned releases. There's a question here again related to anywhere and whether or not it supports incident creation. Um, Unfortunately, that was a little tough to, to answer, not knowing more about um, what the incident would be. Again, if the incident is part of um, HSE or one of the add-on solutions, it would depend on uh, whether or not that add-on is supported yet. Um, if it's incidents from a you know, just a service request type of perspective, then yes, that that would be supported. Um, here's another question related to anywhere, John. Uh, for disconnected mode, once connected, will the data be sent sequentially? Uh, so basically, your transactions would be uh, sent in the order they were were entered. That's correct. That's that's the way that works. Okay. Um, here's a question related to the uh, work centers. And uh, is inventory available in the work centers, uh, physical count inventory adjustments and reconciled balances? I know I have seen that on a roadmap, and I believe that is one of the next batch of work centers that's to be released by IBM. Um, John, do you happen to recall off the top of your head the timing yeah, on that or anything about that? No, I don't. It's not part of what's currently available, but I. I don't know off the top of my head the, um, when that's targeted for release. Okay. Uh, we should have, I, in retrospect, we should have included the roadmaps for you all on that. We do have those um, from IBM and can certainly share them with you after the fact. And I, I do know that inventory is on the work center roadmap. I just don't quite remember the timing for that. Um, in the service request work center, are GPS coordinates recorded in relation to the Maximo locations as well as the location where photos are taken? 
John, do you recall how the GPS works? I, I, I know that works in anywhere. I'm not remembering exactly on the, every, on the work center side of things how those GPS coordinates might get captured. Yeah, um, I, I don't know. Um, and the work centers you know, are, are set up to use, you can certainly use them with mobile devices, but they're not specifically built to be a, you know, to be a, a exclusive to mobile. So I don't know if those access, uh, how they access your GPS functions off your mobile devices. There is another question uh, related to service requests, and this one is asking if someone can create a Maximo service request without having a Maximo user account. So this would be getting into the self-service um, type modules. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, so to create a service request, you're going to need to have some level of Maximo user account, um, you know, even if it's uh, um, a limited type user that, that just has rights for self-service. Um, there are other ways to submit a request, that, submit something that becomes a request to Maximo, but, um, but not as part of these mobile solutions. So the email listener would, would be one that, you know, yeah. if, if you've configured that, but that's outside of this discussion. So one thing to note there is the difference between a user account and a license. So self-service does not require a license, but it does require a user ID. Right. So that's the, the thing there. Um, we're getting a little short on time, so I'm just going to do one or two more questions. Um, this one here is related to the inspector's clipboard, and is this easily configured? Um, so I'm assuming that's related to the inspections available in the the work centers, and they are very easily configured. Uh, there's an option to manage inspection forms, which is where you would create the inspection, and essentially in that you identify all of the questions that are inspect, inspection items that you would be looking at. Um, each one of those can be associated to a, a list of answers where somebody might select a radio button identifying which answer they want to pick, a text box, a numeric entry, um, a meter reading if it's to gather some sort of measurement or meter. So you can configure those, you can group them uh, to make the display a little easier for your inspector to utilize. And then once those inspection forms are created, they can be associated uh, to work orders uh, via job plans or just to the work order directly. They can also be done independent of a work order uh, where you can just do an unscheduled inspection uh, the inspection data is stored in a separate set of tables that are unique to the inspection information. Uh, so you can do an in unscheduled inspections using those forms at any time. All right. A um, couple more questions related to the work centers and the roadmaps and when certain things are going to be released. So we will definitely uh, work to get a copy of that roadmap and make that available. Uh, for those of you that have logged into the presentation, uh, when we send that download out, we can follow up with those roadmaps as well. Um, we appreciate everybody's time and, and lots of good questions. For those of you that we didn't quite get to your questions, um, thank you very much for submitting them, and we will follow up with you, try to get those answers to you. And certainly if you are interested in a mobile solution and would like a more detailed demo or some conversation about how this might apply to you and your organization, we would be happy to schedule a, a deeper dive and a conversation at a later date uh, with you all. Alex? Great. Amy, John, thank you for the terrific information. That was a really great overview. And thank you to our audience. We appreciate your time and for you joining us. Have a great day. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.